to Mean Boys and Girls. Ms. Hostetter here. Welcome to Chapter 3 of The Case of the Kidnapped Candy. Chapter 3 is entitled A Blank Page. I'm anxious to see what happens. As you recall, reading is thinking. And when I hear a blank page, I wonder or I think to myself, hmm, many times I was asked to write things and I had brain burps. I couldn't think of what to write. So at the end of the writing session, whether or not it be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I didn't have much written down on my page. I may have even had a blank page. So I'm thinking, perhaps predicting, I should say, that this might be the case with this little boy when tasked with writing a poem. Now keep in mind that after today's lesson, what I want you to do is I want you to answer a few comprehension questions. These questions will be typed out and placed in EDSBY, and you can submit a file with your response. As a reminder, boys and girls in my class, this is a requirement at this point. Last week, it was all just optional. This will be worth a grade. Keep in mind, it is reading comprehension. Having stated that, you personally do not need to write the responses. You could, if your parents, at, like if they would ask you a question like, what color is the dog or describe the dog, your parents could write down what you said. You personally do not have to write it out. Okay, so keep in mind the questions are this. Why couldn't, I'm sorry, in the beginning of the chapter, why couldn't the boy write his poem? Question number two, who was considered the boy's friend? And number three, what do you think the boy's poem was about? As you're reading, and again, you can jot these questions down or have your parents jot them down. And maybe as, as, I'm, as you're listening to me read this out loud, you could answer those questions. Um, the questions will be posted, however, on the system on EDSBY. Chapter three, a blank page. Nicole Rodriguez decided to write a limerick about her goldfish. Goldie Eddie Becker was writing an ode to baseball and Albert Pujou, I'm not sure how to say his name. Mila was working on a poem about spaghetti and meatballs. And me? On Tuesday, I decided to write about grape juice. Wednesday, I switched it to jigsaw puzzles. Wednesday night, I changed my mind again. And then again on Thursday morning, I was changing my mind more often than a traffic light changes colors. By Thursday night, I was desperate. The poem was due on Friday, but all I had to show for the week was a blank sheet of paper. So let's connect back to my prediction when I first started the lesson. Hmm, I think I said something like a blank page means there's nothing written down on the paper. We have just confirmed by reading the text that that's what, they're in, that's what they were referring to. Maybe I could tell Miss Gleason I had come up with a new kind of poem, the invisible kind. Sounds like this guy's kind of like a comedian. He makes me laugh. I knew what the problem was. Every time I started thinking about my poem, I ended up thinking about our surprise. I wanted to know what was under that sheet. I needed to know. And right now, I want you to stop and I want you to think. I wonder why I said the word needed like that. You probably heard me emphasizing that. I'll read it again in case you missed it. I need it to know. Say out loud or think to yourself, what does that word need it look like in the text? If you said that that word need it was in maybe uppercase letters or bold print or italicized print, give yourself a looking good. Looking good. Actually, this word need it is in that slanted print or italicized print or in italics, however you'd like to say it. So here he is kind of working on his poems. It was too big to be a pile of comic books. It was too small to be a sled. 
It was too quiet to be a new class pet. I was stumped. Miss Gleason wasn't handed out any more hints, and she had told us not to peek under the sheet. She just kept saying we'd have to wait and see. Grown-ups love to wait and see. Don't ask me why. And that kind of makes me connect. It sounds funny, but I do have conversations with my dog. Sometimes I'm busy here getting stuff ready for you all. And the dog's kind of waiting by the door. And I'm like, just wait, Cooper. Just wait. I don't actually say wait and see, but I just say, just wait, just wait. And he probably gets so tired of me repeating that. There was the picture for this page. He's really having a hard time. You can see all the things thrown in the trash, right? Hmm, what's going to happen next? I flopped down on my bed. My dog, Rags, jumped up next to me. He stuck his cold, wet nose into my hand. Hmm, I know this is kind of off topic, but you remember in writing that we told you that you need to start using some descriptor words so that your reader can put a picture in their head. Instead of saying, he stuck his nose into my hand, the author wrote, he stuck his cold, wet nose into my hand. So he used the adjectives wet and cold to describe the nose of the dog. Then he wiped his tongue up the slide of my face. <sniffs> Slurp. Ooh, think to yourself. When we make sound words like that in a text, what is that called? Give me some think time. Hopefully you said out loud or you thought to yourself, Miss Hostetter, that is an onomatopoeia. Can you believe you are in kindergarten and learning a multisyllabic word like that? Onomatopoeia. Sorry, I have some alarms going off reminding me to do some things. What should I write about, Rags? I asked. He didn't know either. He just wagged his tail and plopped his head down on my chest. That's Rags for you. He He's always there when I need him. He's the best friend a guy could have. That was it. He's the boy and his dog, Rags. Hmm. Reading is thinking before we even read, during the reading, and obviously after where you're reflecting upon maybe the plot, what happened in the beginning, middle, and end. You're thinking about problem and solution. But right here, I'm thinking, hmm, I hear the words, that was it. So I'm wondering, what does he, do you think he ends up writing his poem about? That's one of your questions. He was laying down or lying down with his dog on his bed. And he talked about his dog being like his best friend. And that's all that he ever needed. I hopped out of bed and ran to my desk. I grabbed a pencil, squinched up my eyes and bent over the blank page and began to write. I wrote and wrote. Hmm, we talked about this before in class. If you were waiting for the school bus to come, which many of you have experienced this, and then you waited, and you weighed it, and you weighed it, you know that that means what? You waited a long time. If you said that, you are a super duper smart kid. I wrote and wrote. So that means he probably wrote a lot. I crossed things out and scribbled away. Because remember, as good writers, we don't have to spend time erasing and then getting a hole in our paper. We can simply use the editing tools that an author uses, just crossing off words. An hour later, whoa, that shows his dedication. I was curled up in bed, fast asleep. Him writing that poem must have really exhausted him. My poem was tucked away in my backpack, safe and sound, and it was perfect. So boys and girls, that does conclude chapter three reading of the case of the kidnapped candy. Again, where's the kidnapped candy? I'm still thinking about it. The next chapter, Ooh, chapter four. And you read that, it's called Kidnapped. So I'm thinking that at some point here in chapter four, the candy's going to get kidnapped. Can't wait to find out. As a reminder, you do need to answer and submit, those of you in my class, 
the answers to the following questions. In the beginning of the chapter, why couldn't the boy write the poem? Number two, who was the boy's friend in the chapter? And lastly, what do you think the boy's poem was about? That concludes today's lesson, and I just wanted you to do something really special. I want, and I know it's daylight, but I want you, some kids have said, obviously, that sometimes stars are out during the day. We just don't see them. I want you to reach up high, uh, grab a star, put it in your heart, because that's how special you are. I have had a fabulous time reading this. I do look forward to seeing you again. I love you and kiss your brain. See you soon.